go over to Neo4j Sandbox so we can get a better look at the data. This, this particular app is connected to the recommendations database. You can tap new project after you go to sandbox.neo4j.com to see the recommendations um, database. If you open this in a browser, all right, so we're logged into the recommendations sandbox. If I click over here on this icon, I can see the nodes and the relationships that exist in this. There's a, no a node label called person. And if you can see the person can be either an actor or a director. Since the UI for, for both actors and directors looks the same, it was just simpler to have them both be called person um, as opposed to having to deal with two different types of nodes that are essentially the same thing because some people can be both actors and directors. So let's click on this random person here. So we can see that this person acted in three different movies. If we look a little closer at persons, we can see they have a little bit of data. They have a, a name, a date of death, their URL where their um, information came from, which in this case is the movie DB. And this particular person doesn't have a profile image. So if we go find this person in the website, um, which we can by searching for their TMDB ID and replacing it here, we'll see this person does not have um, an image. It's also a very old movie, so it, that sort of makes sense. If we go back to this guy, Patrick Wilson, we can search for him by TMDB, TMDB ID is a capital I and the number is a string. This guy has a lot more information. He has a longer bio and he has importantly a poster image. So the people are connected to movies by either acted in or directed relationships. Those are their only relationships that they have with any other type of node in the database. So here is acted in, here is directed. It's pretty simple. The next type of node is a genre node. Genre nodes are very simple. All they have is a name and their only relationships are the in-genre relationships. So I'm gonna click documentary. You can see that all these movies have in-genre relationships with the genre documentary. And the next type of relationship important for the for the website is rated. So if we go click on user, these are mostly dummy users that come with the app. If you click on the if you mouse over, you're gonna see that they don't have any usernames or any password or any evidence that they've ever authenticated into the app. The users that you make using the UI look a little different. Um, but we still, we still use these users um, to help us inform our recommendations because they have made ratings. So let's see what the ratings look like. All right, so most of the, the users that came with this database have liked, have rated the movie Toy Story. If I select the, if I mouse over here on the rating, you can see that there's a variety of different ratings. There's fives, 4.5s. And so on. 
Um, and using this information, we can build a recommendation for a particular user um, of what type of movies that they would prefer to watch. Right, now that we've gotten a little tour of all of the components of the app, let's start turning on the Flask app. So first, you have to have a either a database running locally with this configuration, or the easier thing to do to get started is to connect to the recommendations project in Neo4j Sandbox. So create an account on Neo4j Sandbox, tap New Project, and then select Recommendations. You can click Open in Browser to take a look at the data, and then after that, tap Connection Details to get the uh, username, password, and bolt URL of this database. Over in the repo, if you navigate to the Flask API um, directory and then tap app.py, you'll be able to see where to type in or copy paste your username, password, and the bolt URL. So here I have it already copy pasted. After you do this in your terminal, From the repo uh, root directory, you should change directory into the Flask API directory. Then, as it says in the README, install the requirements. Export the Flask app. And then type Flask run. You notice I'm, I've already created a virtual environment for the Flask app. All right, this says it's running on localhost 5000, and there's nothing there, so I have to go. I want to look at the Swagger documentation. And now with this, we can go one by one and take a look at all the queries that make up each endpoint used in this app.